Hey class, it's Mr. Falstrom. Welcome to the next lesson on multiplying fractions and whole numbers. I'm glad you're here. Let's go ahead and get started. The learning goal in this video is basically the same as the learning goal in the last video, which is we are going to multiply fractions and whole numbers. We're going to do it using models. We're also going to do it without using models. And the goal is for you to be able to understand both ways. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our first problem. So the first problem we're going to do is 3 fourths times 2. And I want you to take a minute and just think about what multiplication means. What does it actually mean when we multiply? Think back to when you were first taught multiplication. And multiplication is basically repeated addition, right? We're taking, we're adding groups. And so we can take three fourths times two and we can think of it like this. Three fourths times two is the same as uh, me saying, hey, well, how much is two groups of three fourths, which we can draw a picture with. And so this is how we would model it. Two groups of three fourths. Here's one group of three fourths. And then I'll just do a second group of three fourths. And if you count up all the force pieces that are shaded, you will get an answer of six force. So that's one way you can do three force times two. You can just draw it with a picture and count. Um, now we're going to look at it. Um, well, before we look at it the other way, we're going to actually, I'm going to show you another how you can use this as a way to help you get better at renaming fractions. So Right now, um, six fourths is an acceptable answer, and we could also rename it like this. Let's look at the bottom. Look at the bottom group of three fourths. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those pieces away. So I'm going to take that piece away, and I'm actually going to give it to the top. I'm going to fill it. I'm going to complete it. So there we go. So I've moved one piece from the bottom to the top. We still have six fourths. The amount hasn't changed. But what we can do now is we can rename this. If you look at the top, we have four fourths, which is the same as a whole. And in the bottom, we have two fourths. So we can say six fourths is also the same as one whole and two fourths. So we took that fraction greater than one and we renamed it as a mixed number. So that's a, uh, if you're, if that's something where you're not really sure how we do that renaming this picture and using these pictures can actually kind of help you see how it works. Um, now let's look at it without a model. So three fourths times two, I would set it up like this, three fourths times two holes, and I would write the two holes as two over one. And we're just gonna multiply numerators and we're gonna multiply denominators. And if we do that, three times two would be six, four times one would be four, and we get the same answer as we did with the with the picture. We got six fourths. Or you can rename that as one and two fourths. So either strategy works. Let's do another problem. This time we're gonna do three times three eighths. And think about it as groups. Three times three eighths is the same as three groups of three eighths. So let's go ahead and show what that looks like. So here is one group of three eighths. There are eight total pieces in the whole. Three of them are shaded. So that represents three eighths. And that's a second group. And there is our third group. And so to find the answer, we just need to count up all the shaded eighths pieces. How many total eighths pieces are shaded? And if you count them up, you will get an answer of nine eighths. Now let's go ahead and let me show you how to rename nine eighths. So it's going to be the kind of the same thing. Let's take some of these pieces here and uh, let's see, let's, let's, let's see how many holes we can make with the nine pieces. So I'm going to take three pieces right there and I'm going to take two pieces from the bottom. And the reason why I'm doing that is because right now I need five more pieces to make a hole. So I took three from here 
and I took two from here, I'm going to move them up to there. So, um, sorry, I got to erase this. I wish there was a way I could uh, erase it faster. All right. So uh, I've taken those five pieces. I moved them up to there. I still have nine eights, but now I can rename this. So I now I've created nine eighths, which is the same as one hole or one hole and one eighth. And to do it without a model, three holes, I would write that as three over one. I'd multiply it times three eighths. So we'll multiply denominators. Three times three is nine. One times eight equals eight. Boom, we got our same answer as nine eighths. And you can also um, rename that. Um, I take If I take eight of those nine pieces, I can make a hole and I have a one eighth piece left over. And the final problem we're gonna do is uh, what is two thirds of four? So again, think of this as four groups of two thirds, which I'm gonna show like this. Let's do four holes. And then from each hole, let's show two thirds of each one. So there's uh, one group of two thirds shaded red. There's another group of two thirds, another group and another group. And if you count them all up, how many thirds pieces do we have that are shaded? We have eight thirds pieces. And if we want to rename that, it's going to be the same thing. Let's let's just move some pieces around and see how many holes we can make. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get rid of a piece down there. I'm going to get rid of another piece down there, and I'm going to move them right here. So how many holes was I? How many holes am I able to make? How many holes do I have now? I have two holes now, and then how many thirds pieces do I have left over? I have two thirds pieces left over, so I can say eight thirds is equivalent to two holes and two thirds pieces. And again, if I want to multiply that, two thirds times four holes, I'd write two thirds times four over one. I'd multiply my numerators and I get eight. Multiply the denominator, I get three, I get eight thirds, and you can you can leave it like that, or you can rename it as a mixed number, two holes and two thirds. So now that we've done three examples together, um, it's quiz time. I want you to try one on your own this time, and I want you to solve two fifths times four. And it's up to you how you want to solve it. You can either draw a picture model or you can use the multiplication method to solve it. And um, I wish you luck. Go ahead and tell me what you got. All right. Let's see how you did. Two fifths times four. You can see right here, I've got my four holes. I'm showing two fifths on each one. So how many total fifth pieces do I have? Just count them up. You should get an answer of eight fifths. If you chose to multiply it, you would set it up like this, two fifths times four over one, you would get eight fifths. And if we wanted to rename this, um, we would move some of these fifth pieces over. So this is uh, how we could do it. Uh, let's take two right there. Let's take one more. Let's take those three pieces and put them up at the top. And we were able to create one hole. And then we have three fifths left over. So again, this is kind of a short video. The goal was for us to multiply fractions and whole numbers, and we did four problems. Three of them were together. You did one on your own, and um, I showed you how to do it using a model. I also showed you how to do it without using a model. Hopefully, both ways make sense to you. So, way to go. You rock, and thanks for participating.
and I will see you again uh, on my next video. Until then, take care.